My name is Michael Merrifield. I'm an astronomer. Uh, and the object I'm going to place into the time capsule is a galaxy, actually our galaxy, the Milky Way, but uh, somewhat scaled down in size. So th this sort of represents my research in that I, I study galaxies. Um, and in fact, some of the work that went into making the model for this particular reconstruction of the Milky Way was the research that I carried out myself. There's actually about 200 and 30-odd thousand tiny marks in the glass here, arranged in such a way that the density of marks kind of reflects the density of stars in the Milky Way. Obviously, there are many more stars in a real galaxy. Each of the marks is actually a tiny fracture in the glass. Um, and the way the technology works is that you take one of these cubes, blank cubes, and you scan a laser backwards and forwards and up and down. So that sort of gives you the X and Y. And then you focus the laser to different depths in the glass. So that gives you a sort of a third dimension. And every time you fire the laser, you create a tiny fracture in the glass. And that's what makes up the three-dimensional shape. As time goes on, we learn more about, more about the structure of our galaxy. And in fact, even now, we're refining the image um, and coming up with you know, learning new things about the exact structure of the spiral arms and the bar, the rectangular structure in the middle of our galaxy, and so on. So in fact, the picture of the Milky Way is changing, probably not enormously. So in a couple of hundred years' time, people would probably still recognize this as our Milky Way, but they would maybe have a little bit of a laugh saying that's not actually how it turned out to be when we looked at it in more detail. There's a, a revolution about to happen in that the, the next generation of extremely large telescopes is about to start being built. Um, there's actually a mission that's about to be launched within the next few years called Gaia, which will map out the structure of the galaxy, uh, measuring the positions in three dimensions, and actually it will measure the speed of all the stars as well, of a billion stars in the Milky Way. So we're going to learn a huge amount more about the structure of our galaxy, really on a time scale, probably of five or ten years. Um, and so even in ten years' time, things could have changed enormously. So I, I really kind of probably couldn't even guess where we'll be in 200 years' time. To be completely honest, when I was doing an undergraduate degree, I did a good degree in physics, and you got to the final year, and you had to specialise. And most of the things were things like advanced nuclear physics and advanced condensed matter physics, where I kind of had the feeling we'd probably already done the easy stuff. Um, but there were two subjects that we hadn't done at all before which were astronomy and geophysics. And I figured they had to at least start with the easy bits of those, so they were probably good options to do. So the truth is that I actually sort of went into astronomy by being lazy, by taking what I thought was going to be the easy option, but it turned out to be a very interesting option to pursue. It's strange that the things that I'm proudest of as a scientist aren't the, probably the things that get the most kudos, you know, they're not the things that not the most cited paper or the things that other people recognize. They're just sometimes you discover something. That, I guess the first thing I ever found when I was a graduate student, I discovered some very subtle aspect of the way that, that stars move within galaxies and learning about the way they orbit and so on, which in the grand scheme of things is not a huge advance in science. But it was the first time I'd ever actually found something and got that wonderful feeling of knowing something that nobody else knew. And I think probably that discovery about the, this rather sort of subtle aspect of the, the motions of stars in galaxies and being able to infer something about the properties of galaxies from how their stars move around is probably the one I'm, I'm, I take the most pride in. Science is a huge collective activity and in fact there are an awful lot of people who are all working hard in their own little areas and pushing things forward and occasionally making those large leaps forward. Um, so yes, I feel that I'm achieving something, but I feel I'm sort of achieving something as part of a larger community. Um, which is, and that's, you know, that's the ultimate satisfaction. You feel like you're doing something yourself, but you also feel you're part of something bigger as well. So if I had a message for astronomers in a hundred years time, what on earth would it be? It's really hard to say it because actually if I think, you know, the, the, when you start thinking about those kinds of questions, you sort of think back a hundred years and think, well, you know, astronomers a hundred years ago, what would they be saying to me? And actually a hundred years ago, it wasn't even established that there were galaxies outside the Milky Way. Um, and so the picture we had 100 years ago is so different from the picture we have now, it will be kind of arrogant to assume that we've fixed it all now and we've understand everything and that in 100 years' time things won't have changed very much and I will actually be able to give a meaningful message to 100 years' time. Um, so I think I'm going to duck the question entirely just by saying that actually I, I, I can't even begin to imagine where we're going to be in 100 years' time. There we go. There it goes. I think it's brilliant actually, amazing looking thing.